to fish but don't let it get you down you can take it and if it hurts don't let them see you cry you can make it hold your head up woman hold your head up woman hold your head up woman hold your head up Here's my take on how to play Hold Your Head Up by Argent. It's usually played in D, but Russ Ballard's voice is much higher than mine, and it just sounds like I'm shouting, which I am, to reach those beautiful, sweet top notes that he can reach. So I'm going to play an A instead. And this will suit most of us mortals, and if you put a capo on somewhere, then that's going to suit your voice even better. Just put the capo on until you find the most comfortable top note you can sing, and stay there. So, A will do for me. Right hand, thumb pick for me, but not for you necessarily, play string five. Three times. String six open, string six fret three, and I'm going to play through that bass line a few times, because as you know, it's an ostinato, it's for the whole verse and elsewhere, just not the chorus. So it's open, 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 change string to six and play open three. Zero, 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 zero three. Have a go at joining in if you can. I'll just do a couple more. As many of you know, slow repetition, perfect repetition, is what trains muscle memory. Not playing it nine times correctly, and then getting it wrong on the tenth go, because you play too quickly. Next, an A major chord, bar A, a single finger on strings four, three and two. The right hand are going to need three fingers to pluck strings four, three and two. Just take my hand off so you can hear those strings. It's a little out of tune. Better. Back to the chord. It's an Asus 4 chord, so you will need a second or third finger. I usually use my third in this song on string 2 fret 3. And I'm using my ring finger to pluck that string. And the pattern is as follows. Let me just raise the guitar a little. Thumb and fingers together. Fingers together again. Lift off the third finger to expose the bar A, the A major. I'll play that again. Together, fingers together. Lift off left hand, fingers. play it a few times so you can join in get the feel of the, the beat from that one and two and I'm really concentrating that's why I'm staring at the right hand another thing about it is it tends to be detached 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 long short 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 long at the moment what I'm doing is I'm putting my fingers down early my fingertips as I pluck with the fingers but I'm also releasing on the left hand there can you see that squeeze release so it's a belts and braces job for me at the moment but when I get to playing up to speed it tends to be just the left hand so as a separate thing, practice playing cleanly and then stop squeezing and let the strings push your left hand fingers or your right hand fingers if you're left handed, but pushing the fretboard fingers back to a starting or neutral position, a resting position. As a separate thing to practice, very important, because the thing isn't smooth, is it? You know that, it isn't.
it's close to it, but the fact that you have a drum kit, every single drum hit, has very little reverberation or tail after it, so it's pretty short, much like just... So that's happening in the song anyway. Um, I try to make the thumb notes um, detached as well, but because of the amount of string noise I'm getting, the rain's really going for it now. It is Wales. It's a Wales summer. Um, at the moment I'm not worried about that knocking sound. As I say, if I didn't use the thumb pick, it does not make a difference with cleaning up the sound. Even with a nail or the thumb, you can follow up with the fleshy part of the thumb to get a nice clean. Um, it can be done with a thumb pick, but I tend to do it by dropping my hand so I use the ball of my thumb. So it's a wrist drop to put the, th the back of the, the heel of the palm on, or the base of the thumb. But for now, just ignore that and don't bother with it. Next thing, because we want to continue the bass line, and it's getting dark, um, let me try a bit of indoor light if I can. Um, it might not last for long, because um, I don't have the engine on, but let's, uh, let's go with that. That's better. There you are. Because we have to keep the ostinato going, I tend to use my third finger for string two fret three on the A sus four so that my middle's ready. There are better fingerings, I'll show you in a moment. I haven't played the piece this way for long, it only started a couple of hours ago. And I haven't really settled on my fingering. The problem with playing string six fret three is you do have to leap across for the next chord, which is a G chord, as you'll see from the, the chord diagram or the numbers I put up. Right hand is the same pattern, it's strings five, four, three and two. Together fingers, together fingers. Together fingers, together fingers, together fingers, together fingers. G chord. And much the same way as we played. Now we've got then I put my first finger on string three fret two. I tend to put it on pretty early. It's covered by the third finger which is on string three already. At the end here fingers play, third finger comes off and then you play there. And then we pay attention or focus on the, the bass line. So back to mistakes. I can't reach that easily with my third finger, so I lift all my fingers off and play, use my middle finger to play the O3. I'll just play that bit a few times for you, so hopefully you can join in. So there's no bar rate, it's all single fingers, second finger, First finger on the third string, little finger on the fourth string. Little third finger back on, onto string three, fret four. Bass line. I use my second finger. By the way, on this guitar, it's so unforgiving, the action is so low and buzzy, that if I'm not careful, and the neck is not very uh, uh, wide, it's pretty narrow, I have to use the this side of my finger to play string six. I don't play strictly on top because I tend to bask um, the fifth string if I do that. So I tend to reach over, almost like I'm reaching off the neck. So you may have the same situation on your guitar. So just another thing to think about. Back to the, the G chord there. That's a G out two. And because I'm using my second finger for string six fret three now, Notice I've already got my third finger down on string two fret three, ready for the A sus four. So now I've got a free middle finger. So from here. Down goes the bar A and the third finger. Mm. 
next bit, it's a chord not exactly borrowed from Salisbury Hill, but it is used there. It's a D major chord. String two, fret three, second finger or middle finger. String three, fret two, third, third string, fret two, first finger. String four, fret four. Right hand is playing four, three and two. So I'm just going to play that little section over and over. So D over an A bass. And it really sounds great if you do release on the D chord. Don't play. Play. As soon as you've played it, release the pressure on the left hand, which is a relief as well. Choppy rhythms don't hurt so much. So smooth, smooth, smooth. Short. Then we've got the bass line to take care of again. I'm going to play that little fragment a few times for you to play along to. fingers together on the D chord, fingers, thumb and fingers, release barre only, bass note, open six string, string six fret three and now we've got a G major seven and followed by, which is string six three and two and one. Thumb moves across, first finger stays on string one fret two. And we play five, three, two and one together, thumb and fingers. Lift the finger off and play strings five, three, two and one. And after that, divert your attention to your thumb. Thumb. To thinking about the bass line again. Oh, oh. There's a similar phenomenon in trying to play albatross when you have to keep thinking about what you're playing with the fingers and then the second you have a chance you look to think about the thumb. And the same goes with how to play Mission Impossible, which will be something I'll do soon. Sounds amazing, a bit of a show-off kind of effect, but it does sound beautiful as well. And it, it's one of those wonderful pieces where, I'm sorry to get off the point, but it's one of those wonderful pieces where you know the tune, it's really famous, you can hear the band in your head, the whole orchestra, and it sounds a lot harder than it is, which is a lovely thing, because it isn't always true. Sometimes we play things on the guitar that are even harder than they sound, which is a bit of a bore, but not this piece so much. It's not easy, I wouldn't say. I struggled earlier on. Back to the piece. I'm gonna play that a few times. From the D with your A bass, fingers, R A, thumb, chord, open six, G major seven, and then the G major seven with an A bass. Finger off for an A11. The chord names, I do love naming chords and identifying what they are in, in terms of chord names and jazz chord names, but it, when you've got a chord with that extends beyond the seventh and go either ninth, eleventh, thirteenth, the additional notes can be named in lots of different ways. You know, simple example being um, A minor with a C bass. Now, if, if I play enough A minor and follow it up with an A minor with a C bass, to most people's ears, including mine, it sounds like a version of A minor still just we've taken the third of the chord and put it in the bass. But if you were playing a lot of C, C major, and called it C major six, which it is, an alternative name, it makes more sense in that context. So I think 
Owen Lord is um, a great example. You probably never will meet him, but um, I knew him when he was about 14, 13, 14. And he was forever calling chords that, and that, and that. And I used to say to him, look, chords are your friends, it's like family members and you've forgotten their names. But actually, most of the time, that's exactly what we do learn. We get a friend who says, do that, maybe with a few extra <laughs> explanations or descriptions, and uh, that is all right. Whole thing now. Apart from playing the wrong bit there. Now, I'm going to give you a chance to play along to that. I hope you can manage it. One, two, three, four. And as I mentioned earlier, or perhaps I did, I can't remember now, if you can put an accent on the last note of the bass, it helps to bring in the, the floor tom. Uh, to imitate it, you know, add in that part of the arrangement. Makes a world of difference, doesn't it? If, if you can put that accent in, you can also do it with the right hand. But I'm not prepared for this. I haven't rehearsed it or learnt it. But you can actually use the base of the thumb and try to do that while you're playing. Sorry about the messiness. see there's potential for getting it right there chorus hold your head up woman a major and then C but played taking the bar eighth up to fret five so you can either do it as a one finger bar eighth and then put the second finger down on string two fret six C suspended fourth. There's a lot of suspended fourth chords in here. Right hand, the same as before. Together, fingers together, fingers, thumb, fingers this time. And then finish it off with open four and three. Or use fingers two, three, and four. For extra crunchiness, you can put the first string in if you're strumming. Now, I wanted to mention this because I like the contrast. If you can play fingers in the verse and take over with some strumming, I'm using them down strokes with the back of my index finger and a little bit of the others when I feel like it. And I use the upstroke with the thumb pick. And I now can put in the rhythm that we have in the verse, which is dun chicka dun chicka dun chicka dun da dun chicka dun chicka dun chicka dun, which is down. You can kind of put it on down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. So it's worth trying that out if you don't just want to play works or if you want to stick with the fingers still just keep the thumb going
did you notice that I put a C bass in? But I don't, I don't want to complicate things too much, but the bass player does play. Or I think he plays them. Um, so if you want to do that, then when you get to your C sus4 with a bass there, put your first finger down on string 5 fret 3. And don't forget the open strings. Sorry, which I did. I'm just experimenting. I might do that sometimes. Once I've really got the song up to speed. And I like that also, so that's closer to the strumming, isn't it? Finally, C suspended fourth, and C, C, B, sorry. So that is string 5 fret 2, string 4 fret 4, string 3 fret 4, string 2 fret 5. And finally, string 2, 3 and 4, all at fret 4. You can either play thumb and fingers, fingers together, fingers, thumb, thumb, or when you don't have a band, you need to accompany yourself somehow, not just by playing it in your head. It's awfully close to the original, I think. It's certainly in the intentions, right? So the fancier version or the harder version with this bass note and also with the string six fret three. Sorry, it's hot at this angle. So I play open, 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 three, three. I, mean, just sparing. I don't like going all the way back with the fingers there. I like Bari, fingers, Bari. One last thing, the fingering for, I was experimenting earlier on and it can make an awful lot of sense to play the bass notes, string six fret three with a pinched thumb and do it every time and then adjust your fingering accordingly, because that's logical. But I just got into using this pattern because that last note is meant to be accented, I think, to help mimic the drum kit and that, that rhythm, the basic jun 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 jun. There's time to leap it across to string two fret three for the next chord. But a smoother progression would, would be First finger and then playing the G chord with fingers two, three, four, and then you're ready to have the first finger. There's more time for it to move across. But just experiment and find what works for you. And there's a similar reasoning there. You could play on the D, you could use your fourth finger and then there's no rushing around. You don't have to readjust the middle two fingers at all. Just third finger drops back down, little finger companies, and the second finger is ready to do that as well. So, so there's a lot of logic to it, but because of pattern is reasonably choppy I don't mind there's plenty of time to move and the tempo is not too high so it isn't like it matters but if you're 
absolutely after efficient fingering. That'll be what works best. But I like breaking the rhythm up because in my mind, I'm thinking separately, separately the bass, and the these are the, it's, that's Russ Ballard's playing. You know, it's nice to spread, uh, separate the ideas. Hence why I mentioned, might be great to play it all the time. But it is true that once you've found a fingering that works and you stick to it, if you try to relearn it, it can take forever. Anyway, there you go, a long-winded, rambling version of how to play Hold Your Head Up, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And perhaps I'll look back on this and maybe edit it, I don't know yet. If you got to the end, well done, and do make some comments and let me know what you think about playing it in A, or whether you'd like me to redo the whole thing in D for you, uh, or what songs you'd like me to have a go at as well. Um, I'm not used to looking at the camera, by the way, so when I, look, I tend to be looking down. So I'm not actually talking in my sleep. I, I'm actually awake. And that light has worked really well. Now, is, is it still raining? No, it's stopped. Ooh. Well, lots of love to you all. And as I say, like, subscribe, etc., etc. Just uh, give me some encouragement and I'll keep on pushing things your way. And just let me know what songs you reckon I ought to have a go at. Pick a favourite. See ya.